welcome to the new presentation video of the series of the of concept for the third party Kinex API. Um, the wiki page has been updated according to the new uh, released version 2001 uh, and you can follow the uh, novelties uh, on this page. Um, so the documentation is most likely the same, um, but there are novelties and that's what I'm going to show you today. So let's start as usual from the beginning by downloading the setup file, which has been enriched a lot. And uh, by downloading the Postman collection and importing that in your Postman to try out the API uh, possibilities. Uh, and then let's most likely present to you what are the novelties and uh, why this uh, documentation has been enriched with many other steps. So let's have a look first of all to our uh, Docker Compose uh, uh, system. So I simply uh, unzip everything in one of the folder. And uh, now, as you can see, there are many more uh, files and directory uh, than before. Uh, let's have a look at the, to the Docker Compose YAML file that now presents you three services. So uh, database Postgre service, a key clock service, which uh, is based to um, on the uh, on the database service to uh, grant you the authentication the way uh, it's specified in the IoT specification and the classical third party API service as it was before with some extension in the environment uh, condition uh, and uh, some, something else. I mean, I mapped my personal project to be connected to the uh, installation. Uh, the installation uh, properties are now collected in this entry point .shell file, which is post processed at launch of the type 3 uh, API service as it's written here. So in the endpoint shell file, we can see that we can specify the IP address of our uh, Kinex Net IP interface to be local connected via Falcon to the uh, bus installation of your concept. And there is another very important um, variable, which is this multi project that you should turn to false in case you are running a local environment like I'm doing on my Raspberry Pi, because this flag to set true, uh, it's mainly used for the online demo, which is not connected to any uh, installation, to let the user process uh, multiple projects uh, via the uh, user interface. Nothing more, nothing less. Then uh, let's start by doing the Docker Compose app, pure as that, as written in the documentation. That will start the three server one after another. So the database first, then the key clock, then the uh, type three API. Uh, when it's, it will take some times. Huh? So I will simply uh, go through the documentation while it's booting. Uh, don't worry if it takes time, it's quite normal. I mean, Raspberry Pi is not a computer with super powerful uh, computational power, huh? so it's quite normal. Um, it's surely a lot verbose than before, so don't be scared that this is doing uh, APT gets or uh, things like that in the, in the end. I am also connected really to a KNX cage, so a collection of device uh, on my back. So in the end, what we can see is that we are connected to uh, and uh, we can receive telegrams uh, by pressing a rocker example given. So just a few words about what is doing. As you can see, it's running in parallel the three services. So Postgres started. Then uh, key clock. Uh, now it's difficult for me to come back, but then the type 3 API is running, but it's waiting that the key clock uh, service is uh, available uh, by a polling one per second. And when the key clock service is ready, then this polling will stop. 
so everything will be set up and running. Some extra notes to check your uh, installation properly, your local, if you are not using your Raspberry Pi like I do. Uh, when this is run, you can use uh, some tool like uh, PG Admin to check if your uh, Postgres server is currently running uh, correctly. So I don't know, I could disconnect from the remote server and then perhaps connect to the server. And if it gives you results, like to see what are the database that are there and then end, then you see that it has been refreshed. So the uh, Postgres service uh, is running properly. Otherwise, it's not. But this is just a uh, debug note about. Um, let's also, since it's important, start uh, by uh, importing the Postman collection in your Postman situation. And let's have a look to the key uh, variables. So to make it running uh, on a local proof of concept, you have to change some variables using the IP address of your Raspberry Pi, like I did. My Raspberry Pi is the own under 99. And I point, I'm pointing actually to the various services and the corresponding ports as I created them on the uh, uh, Raspberry connection. So key clock host and authority are the three main variables that you have to edit then save okay yes i guess so save it override okay no problem and then what's 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 then uh, in general what are the novelties we actually sorry i did not meant to click here we actually introduce as following the specification the authentication uh, flow uh, so before this version of the proof of concept there was no way to run the authentication the way it's uh, specified in the uh, third party api uh, server uh, of the specification now it's there is an implementation done via the key the key clock and basically what what does it mean it does mean that if you try as freshly run the service by asking uh, as before whatever huh, you can get uh, now it's probably not yet started no probably it's not really started you get anyhow it's, it's written in documentation forbidden or unauthorized so without performing the authentication flow now the server is closed it's more secure than before of course before it was simply open um, and to make again the client access your server from uh, external then you have to run via the authentication flow and that's what basically it's uh, written in the documentation step by step, but it's better that we uh, show it uh, live. So I don't know if this is already started actually. Let me check. I will simply try to run a frame. No, it's not yet uh, getting a frame. Yeah, you have to take a bit of patient here because of uh, the Raspberry is not really. Uh, super performant uh, processor system but okay admin console listening so we are now getting through okay now it's key clock has been boot and the uh, type 3 api takes over again and it will try to connect to the interface 57 let's wait one second more Okay, creating Falcon bus, connecting to Falcon bus, state change, connect. Okay, fine. So actually, now it should be able to be connected to my local interface. I'm going to simulate it by sending some frames. Let's see what happens. 
Okay. Okay, they will come actually. Coming back to the postman. Sorry. If I now try to send any request as it is where I'm pointing actually, because it would be that as I did this save uh, save all. Oh, damn it, I'm gonna have a lot of it's open. Well, is that working? Well, no, okay, next. Okay, actually, it's working. So, this is the base, the base call you can do to simulate that everything is up and running. If it does not answer you anything, then mm, you will have uh, some problems. So, let me now check edit variables. Again, the port seems to me correct as it was before. I will clean up the token because to exchange it later, save it. Then location. OK, now it's back as uh, it was uh, simply described. So now it's returning you an outcast. You cannot simply ask anything. So let's run through the authentication flow. This is still the pose, I believe. But OK, now it's receiving messages and it's performing triggers of the database, creating time sequence and whatever else it specified in the um, IoT specification. Then let's talk about the authentication flow as it is written. So you don't have to change any variables of that because they are already uh, inherited from the collection itself. The easiest way to go as this authentication should pass by a um, web page because that's how it's specified. Uh, it's simply to run via Postman this call, uh, copy it because as you can see, you will have a web page in return and then simply call it via your browser uh, then if you stumble over that it's because as me you already have played with so you just have to remove the redirect uri which is not valid anymore and go to the login page in the postgre database of the proof of concept there are already a couple of users set up admin foo and user foo let's use user foo no? with password foo for both uh, just to have a different level of um, permissions that then something you can uh, do yourself uh, properly and then he should give you back a page to ask you for a consent an explicit consent of okay if this is not working now uh, it should be because of my uh, browser cache problem. So let me try with another browser. That was the call. I'm not fully sure, but uh, I direct you and I. Let me for example, let's say the password, and that's what I meant before. So the grant to access API, which it's under some uh, regulation, so it will last one hour, example given. If you give the explicit consent with this privilege schema and whatever else, this flow returns you an authentication code that you can exchange with the token using this specific call of the Postman collection. Oh, wait, 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 wait. wait. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. And this access token, as is written in the documentation, it's something that you can then add it in the Postman collection variables sections. Say, and then now this call should give you results instead of unauthorized. That's how it's presented by the proof of concept. You see that now you are able to use location. OK, another um, extension for this new version of the proof of concept is that you have uh, filters uh, implemented, example given on location. So you can simply, I don't know, run some filter on room, type equal to room. I don't know, this is a pretty fine set. Uh, so it gives you only the, uh, the room uh, on the location or uh, only the data points uh, that are uh, live in type, which there are not, there is none in, in, in my case. So actually that was it uh, for, for the, the running of today. So let's come back to the documentation, sorry. I guess I told you whatever I had to tell you about. Exchange of the token, and then you can get location. And okay, that's definitely fine. So this is it about the presentation. Uh, there are much more uh, novelties upcoming in the uh, 2002, which is uh, basically foreseen for May somewhere. So stay tuned and see you next time. Bye bye.